Hello, it's good to be with you today. Good day and welcome. Welcome to each and every one of you to this very special service of this day. Special welcome to all fresh anointing international churches assembled together as part of our monthly program. Happy to have you. And a special welcome to all our friends on YouTube, on Facebook, on the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to also welcome all our friends that are watching us in the great country of Guyana, watching us on RBS TV 13, and all our friends in 23 Caribbean island countries that are watching us on Mercy and Truth TV in the great country of Jamaica. Thank you for joining us. I would also like to welcome those who are joining us on Logic One TV channel 112 in the great country of Jamaica also. Welcome all of you to this special service of today. I would also like to welcome those that are listening to us on the podcast, Bishop A.O. Etiola's podcast where over 72,900 episodes have been downloaded as we speak from many, many, many countries around the world. Finally, I believe I need to welcome those that are listening to us on Twitter and on our own radio station, Fresh Waves Radio, and those who are listening to us on MixLR, our new platform, that is drawing people to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are a big family from over 45 countries around the world assembled to eat fresh food from the same table today. I hope you came hungry. Please don't throw off what you eat. It's going to do you good. It's balanced diet. May God bless you mightily. It's my prayer. Let us ask God to help us before we start. Heavenly Father, I ask for your anointing upon my life. And I ask for your anointing upon those who hear me. Let something happen that will draw us closer to you today. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 23. Book of Numbers, chapter 23. What I want to do this day is draw your attention to an important truth that we all know very, very, very well. And what's that truth? It is this. Everything we receive from God is as a result of His mercy towards us. Can I repeat that? Everything we receive from God is as a result of His mercy towards us. Who you are today and who you will become tomorrow will be because of God's mercy upon your life. You know what my prayer for you is? That God's mercy will never, ever depart from your life. From what we have seen all through the scriptures, it is very, very clear that the mercy of God can take a nothing and make something out of it. Yes, the mercy of God can take a nobody and make somebody out of him and out of her. The mercy of God 
can take a hopeless situation and make it very, very hopeful. Yes, the mercy of God can take a man from prison and put him in the palace. There is no limit, ladies and gentlemen, to the wonders that God's mercy can do. But, but, there is a wonder that I have seen under the heaven many, many times. And it makes me ask, how come? How come that after God's mercy has taken a nothing and made something out of it, after a while, it goes back to nothing again? How come that after the mercy of God has turned a nobody, into somebody after a while the gold becomes dross again and the somebody becomes a nobody again how come how come the situation that mercy has made hopeful eventually becomes hopeless how come how come the poor that mercy makes rich after a while turns to poverty again? How come the jobless that mercy of God blesses with a wonderful job ends up on the unemployment line again looking for job? I said, how come today that one whose God's mercy places on the throne ends up being dethroned again? It's the answer to that question that I want to focus on on our broadcast for today and on our time together for today. The answer in most cases is character. Yes, you heard me right. Character. That is why the title for my message today is Character Counts. You heard me right. Character Counts. My friends, please, I beg of you, pay attention to your character. You see, what mercy can do for you character can undo. What mercy can help you to possess, character can dispossess you of it. You see, mercy will lift you up, but character will bring you down. Mercy can upgrade you, my friends, but character can downgrade you. Mercy of God can glorify you, but character can take it away from you. Mercy will take you there, but character can remove you from there. Mercy will put you on the throne, but character can dethrone you. Listen, people, the house that mercy builds can be overturned by character. The blessing that mercy bestows can be turned into a curse by character. The couple that mercy joins can be separated by character. I am here with you today to appeal to you, please pay attention to your character. If you don't, you will receive mercy, but you will not be able to hold on to what you receive. And many, many, many times you will cry for it, bitter tears, 
like Esau did. And you might never get it again. Character. Hey. Character counts. You know, those of us in deliverance churches, we pay a lot of attention to what witches and wizards can do. But we don't seem to understand that the power of character is more potent than the power of witches and wizards, demons and devils all brought together. Character beats them. What witches and wizards and demons and devils cannot do. Bad character will do to a human being. Listen to Bishop. What marine spirits cannot take away from you, character huh, will take it away from you. The reversal of fortune in our lives that we blame on others many times is actually an unfair assessment. The fault at the end of the day lies not with others, but with our faulty character. Look at what you may be going through right now. You can easily blame others for it. Yeah. But be sincere with yourself. Maybe, just maybe, that long time flaw in your life, that long time flaw in your character, that everybody knows, by the way, and you yourself, you know, that may be the reason for what you are going through right now. We're talking about a very serious subject today, ladies and gentlemen, character. A flaw in character can frustrate the mercy of God in anybody's life. I said I'm speaking to you today on the title Character Counts. Let me show you a couple of people in the scriptures that received the mercy of God and reversed what they got because of their character. God blessed them. God lifted them up. Then God changed his mind because of their character. You know, once upon a time, war arose against Israel. A king named Balak was determined to destroy the children of Israel. So what he did was he hired a prophet, stroke wizard, to help him curse them. But thank God for mercy. <laughs> mercy blocked Balaam and Balak. They tried it the first time. Mercy blocked them. They tried it the second time. Mercy blocked them. Then God spoke the riches of his mercy through that backsliding prophet in Numbers chapter 23. Look at what it says in verse 20. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God said, there's no stain in their character. Consequently, they cannot be cursed. Well, when it turned out to be like that, listen to this. Balaam knew that the only thing that can frustrate the mercy of God in anybody's life, in any nation's life, is flawed, faulty character. So you know what he did? He gave a counsel to Balak. And we're told what the counsel was in Revelation chapter 2. In verse number 14. But I have a few things against thee. Jesus said. 
because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. What did Balaam, Balaam do? Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. You see that? So how did that happen? It's recorded in Numbers 25. Reading there from verse number 1. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto their sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and they bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Did you see that? Balaam didn't have to do anything. All he had to do was look for a way to destroy the character of Israel. The moment their character was compromised, Balak won and Balaam won also. Listen, people, character counts and it can count against you on the day of warfare. Flawed, faulty, Character is very dangerous. It opens the door of our lives to the enemies of our souls. You know, one of the most frustrating thing about deliverance, and we do a lot of that in this church, is when someone comes for deliverance and God's mercy shows up and delivers them. Here is the key now. If the delivered person leaves and does not pay attention to character, the spirits will come back seven times more wicked. I'm telling you, everywhere you turn, you find out again and again and again that character counts. You know, I'm reminded of a man who was a nobody in the Bible. Nobody. Totally a nobody. And mercy of God made a great somebody out of him. A man who mercy, mercy, mercy of God gave what has never been given to anyone in the history of the children of Israel. His story is long. But let me read to you where the Bible mentions his merciful upliftment. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 9 in verse 17. 1 Samuel chapter 9 in verse 17. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, the same shall reign over my people. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. It is amazing how mercy can orchestrate things and beautifully put things together for anyone. Unfortunately, the man got to the throne and guess what kicked in? His bad character came in after God enthroned him. There are some things, ladies and gentlemen, listen to Bishop. There are some things that may be inside you right now that only position and power will bring to the surface. When you are nobody, nobody sees it. When you have nothing, nobody sees it. But the moment God blesses you with power, the moment God blesses you with position, the moment God blesses you with upliftment, then these character flaws will come to the surface. You know what my prayer for you is today? That whatever is inside of you that will frustrate the mercy of God in your life, ah, may the fire of God destroy them. You didn't say amen. 
Let me pray for you again. That whatever may be inside of you, whatever may be inside of me, that will frustrate the mercy of God in our lives. May the fire of God destroy them today. You see, here was this bad story. After Saul was anointed king of Israel, it was not long before two, not one, two, two character flaws manifested in his life. And those two character flaws that manifested in his life after he was enthroned by God derailed God's plan for his life. You know what those two character flaws were? One was stubbornness. The other was rebellion. Those were the two that the Bible tells us of. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, in verse 23, let me read it to you. For rebellion, number one, is as the sin of witchcraft. Number two, and stubbornness. Is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Look at the consequence. Of his flawed character. He says the Lord himself also. Has rejected thee. From being king. Wow. Two character flaws of Saul. Stubbornness. And rebellion destroyed the potentials that he had. You know, I was curious when I read that and I decided to look in the English dictionary. This is how it defines Saul's character flaws. English dictionary. It says stubbornness, listen to this, is having or showing dogged determination not to change one's attitude or one's position on something. Wow. Especially, it says, in spite of good arguments or reasons to do so. Stop on to say, that's my way. It's my way or it's the highway. I'm not going to change. I'm going to do this. It has destroyed many marriages. It has destroyed many business partnerships. It has destroyed many churches. It has destroyed many friendships. Stubbornness. Then it says Saul also had a character flaw. Anger. I mean rebellion rather. We'll get to anger in a minute. Rebellion. Rebellion is defined as an act, listen to this, as an act of violent or open resistance to an established government or ruler. It says when you manifest that, you're practicing what derailed Saul. Get them out of your life quickly if they are there. Because if you don't, they will mess with where God wants to take you to. Look at what they did to Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, in verse 23, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness. <laughs> I smile, I really shouldn't smile. I was talking to someone a couple of years ago and she told me, she said, Daddy, you know, I'm a very stubborn person. I talked to another man. He also said, well, sir, you know, I'm a very stubborn person. That was a couple of years ago too. And I said, they even glorified themselves in the character flaw that destroyed the potential of Saul. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. People, 
You know yourself. And I know myself. Your own may not be that you are stubborn. Your own may not be that you are rebellious. But look inside yourself today. Whatever it is that is controlling your life, character flaw, it's going to bring you down. It's going to destroy you. You know, there are many, many people that time will fail me today to tell you about. People who receive the mercy and the blessing of God that no one else has ever received. And at the end of the day, their character messed everything up. Think about Adam and Eve. They were the first of the bunch that character drowned. Think about highly, highly exalted Moses. He lost his ticket to the promised land. All the labor with the children of Israel in front of Pharaoh through the Red Sea became nothing through a character flaw that Moses had. Guess what it was? Anger. Wrath. My friend, everybody knows you're an angry person. It will destroy your potentials in life if you don't destroy it. What about Ananias and Sapphira? Their character flaw, husband and wife, was lying. I wish it was only for the husband so the wife can prevail. But both of them were sleeping in the same direction. And both of them went down. The very same day. It wasn't the devil that killed them. It wasn't witches and wizards that destroyed them, my friends. It was character flaw. What about Samson, the lover of Angelina, that was named Delilah? It brought him out of the world quicker than God intended for him. Even Isaiah. He had a limited ministry in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. His ministry was limited. You know how I know? Because in chapter 6, God showed up and he said, son, you need some cleansing. There's a character flaw in your life. You don't know how to use your tongue. You don't know how to use your mouth. And then, a coal of fire touched his mouth and he was cleansed. And it was when that happened, people, that God asked the question, who shall I send and who will go for us? Wait a minute. I thought he has gone for you in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Yes and no. When your character flaw is dealt with, you are ready for a ministry like you've never had before. What about Eli? Eli and his sons, they lost the priesthood and they even lost their lives. What killed them? It wasn't witches, it wasn't wizards, it wasn't marine spirits. It was character. In fact, God said that their character was so bad that nobody among their descendants will ever be a priest again. Lord have mercy. And he said any man among them will die at the hey, height of their age. The lesson I learned from all these examples are many more that I don't even have the time to share with you. The lesson is very simple. We must cry to God for mercy so he can purge us that every flaw in our character that he will remove them so that we will not end up like all these sad stories that I just told you. Well, so far, I've talked to you about mercy. Let me change the subject a little bit and talk to you about prayer and about character. Hmm. The point I want to make, ladies and gentlemen, is very simple. 
Prayer, you and I know, is very important. But I came to tell you today that character is more important than prayer. Did you hear what I said? I said prayer is very important. But character is more important than prayer. You see, most people believe that we can pray ourselves to success and get away with virtually anything if we set time aside to pray and to fast some fairy prayer points. But I'm sorry to say to you today, there is no amount of binding and loosing that can substitute for character. Mm -mm. No amount of praying can replace character. I dare say this morning, character is a matter that is weightier than both prayer and fasting. Can I repeat that? I said, character is a matter weightier than both prayer and fasting. Listen, the mansion that prayer and fasting build, character will pull it down in no time. Whatever prayer builds, whatever consecrating and fasting will build, give it time, ladies and gentlemen. Character that is flawed, character that is upside down, will surely pull it down in no time. You know what is so sad though? Who talks about character today? You go watch Christian TV, and if you have time, stay there for 24 hours. Who talks on Christian television about building good character, displaying good character? There's no time for that. We don't have time for prayer. We don't have time for prosperity. And it's not that those things are wrong, but these are the weightier things we need to pay attention to. Who goes to church now and gets told? to go and walk on their character. Very few, if any. Oh, who does yearly things and talks about character? You'll always find 2021, my year of victory. 2022, my year of abundance. 2023, my year of you know what. You'll never hear 2023, my year of working on my character. No, that will not sell. That will not bring people to church. We don't pay attention to character. Whereas it counts. What do you see in churches? Flyers everywhere. <laughs> 30 days. Fasting and praying. Seven Sundays. Of breakthrough prayers. 24 hours. Of non stop praying for financial breakthrough. Scarcely will you hear anything about character. Yet, listen to this. When you get to the gates of heaven, and one day, one day you will, there is only one thing that will matter character. If you show them your prayer passport, they will commend you, but it will not open the gates of heaven for you. If you show them your prosperity as your paths, they will commend you for being rich, but it will not open the gate for you. If you show them your knowledge of the scriptures, they will commend you for your diligence. But the ability to quote scripture after scripture will not open the heavenly gates for you. What heaven will be looking for? The day you get to the gates there 
will be character. Character. An important grace that is rarely mentioned in churches today. Let no one deceive you. Character counts. It counts here and it counts in eternity. It is by far weightier than prayer that many churches have built their entire ministry on. Without character, praying is a waste of time. Oh, can I repeat that? Without character, praying is a waste of time. Even David himself said it. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Wow. So if there's something wrong with my character, the Lord will not just hear me. Not that he will not answer me. Forget about answering. It's only who you hear that you answer. Say so the Lord will not even hear me. Pay attention to your character. Because it affects you in your prayer closet. Character is weighty. <laughs> Remember the story of a man and a woman that had a big fight. A brother and a sister. Christian people. They had a big fight before they went to work. And the wife got back to work. Got back to the house earlier than the husband. The husband came in around 8 o'clock in the evening. And he went to do what he always did. He went to the side of the bed, knelt down to pray. And the wife went to him and gently pulled his shirt. And he said, honey, don't waste your time praying. With the way we left this house today fighting, God is not going to hear what you are talking to him about. You better let us settle what is wrong so that God can hear us. Hey! So many prayer warriors, they are also warriors in the house. Character is weighty. It was what delivered Hezekiah. Yes. On the day he was told to put his house in order. You remember his story? God said, get your house in order. Get ready to die. You know what Hezekiah did? He did what you and I do. We pray, right? But you know what he took to God? He took character to God. And he said, God, look at my character. Look at my character. Can anyone with this kind of character die the way you want me to die prematurely? And God said, I agree. And he called the prophet. He said, go back and reverse what you said to him. His character does not deserve this kind of ending. Don't let bad character end your life. Live your life in such a way that you can go to God and say, God, check the way I think. Check the way I talk. Check the way I do this. Check the way I do that. I'm above board. My character is spotless by the grace of God. And God will say, sure. You are right. You know, in churches like our own church, we use prayer to find spiritual solutions. Yeah. Unfortunately, what we do is this. We self-sabotage ourselves by seeking spiritual solutions to character deficit issues. Can I repeat that? We self-sabotage ourselves by seeking spiritual solutions to character deficit issues. It's not a prayer you need. It's a character you need to fix. Many of us need to fix our thoughts. Many of us need to fix fix our mouths. Many of us need to fix our hearings. Many Christians, they look at 
everybody as suspects. Especially in deliverance churches. They look at everybody as suspects for their predicaments. When actually their greatest issues hide within their character. Stop looking at your problem with the eyes of is this one, is that one, is that one. Look inside you. It could be your pride. Look inside you. It could be your jealousy. You know, we talk a lot in our church and in many deliverance churches. We talk and we pray a lot against destiny changers. Yeah. I'm talking about the witches, the wizards, the voodoo practitioners. But in reality, lack of character is the worst enemy of destiny. Can I repeat that? Lack of character is the worst enemy of destiny. What will ultimately keep a man from reaching his destiny in life? It's not enemies of it's not enemies that are waiting for him out there. Uh-uh. But rather, it is character that follows him out there. And they give you a big position at work, a big position in the family, a big position in the business world, a big position in the professional world, a big, a big uh, position in the ministerial world. Your character. Follows you out there. And it is not witches or wizards or those you walk with that will bring you down. Uh -uh. It is your character that can bring you down. The British writer and politician Thomas Macaulay, who lived between 1800 and 1859, he said something. He said the measure of a man's character is what he will do if he knew he will never be found out. The measure of a man's character is what he will do if he knew he will never be found out. Let me say emphatically though that I'm saying this not because I don't believe prayer is important. I believe it is. But I'm saying this, ladies and gentlemen, so we can pray and pay attention to our character. To exalt prayers and neglect the place of character and our relationships with God and people around us is an error. A great error in the church today. Many, 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 many times we fast and pray and bind demons that don't exist. Our real demons are our greatly flawed characters. No matter where you place prayers, please place character above them all. Let me tell you a story about the Chinese people. The Chinese people built a great wall of China to keep enemies from being able to invade them. That was why they built that wall. Well, guess what happened? After they built the Great Wall of China, during the first 100 years of its existence, the Chinese people were invaded three times. And the invading army had no need to climb the wall or pull down the wall. You know what they did? They bribed the soldiers that were at the gate. They bribed the guards and the guards opened the doors and they came in. The Chinese built the walls, but they forgot the character building of their soldiers. Though the great wall has over the years become a symbol of the country's power and enduring strength and spirit. But it has actually been a good reminder to the Chinese people of the superiority 
of human character. Character Council. How many people and homes have been invaded and looted and devastated by the enemy through the bribery of ego, bribery of self-indulgence, bribery of insincerity, bribery of, ins of unfaithfulness, bribery of this and bribery of that in the character. The Chinese people failed and they realized it much later that the best defense against the enemy is not a fortified wall. No. It is a fortified character. The building of human character comes before the building of anything else. Yeah. I want to say emphatically again that character is not optional. It is a door opener to the future that God has planned for you and the future that God has planned for me. The greatest fraud in life is religion without character. Can I repeat that? The great fraud in life is religion without character. A man without character is a reckless person. I repeat, a man without character is a reckless individual. Even the Son <laughs> agrees with this truth that I'm sharing with you today. You see the shadow of the sun on my head, the shadow of the sun on my shirt. That's the sun shining from outside where I'm doing this recording. So it's not a shadow of anointing, it's the shadow of the sun. Ignore it and just listen to what I have to say. That will even make me brighter in your eyes. You know, many years ago, I want to remind you what I just said. A man without character is a reckless person. Many years ago, I had a house in Africa that I wanted to sell. A bishop in Africa is well known all across the world. If I mention his name, all of you know him. He sent his elders to come to me, or rather to come to my agent, to check out the building. And they did. They wanted it for a school hostel. And they told my agent that they would buy it. But, listen to this now. They wanted my agent to add money on top of the asking price. So if I was asking for $5, they wanted the agent to say it's $12. So when the bishop pays $12, they will get the remaining. And they said after the bishop pays, they will come back to collect what they have added to it. They were even so flawed in their character as to tell my agent not to worry about the exorbitant addition that the bishop trusts them and will approve anything that they say. Elders, Tongue-talking, trusted people with no character, of course. I told the agent, don't negotiate with them. The deal is shut down. I'm not going to be a part of this kind of foolishness. The greatest fraud in religion is your character, is my character. You know, back in the days when Germany was divided, you remember that? East Berlin, West Berlin, a huge wall separated East and West Berlin. So what happened was that the people in East Berlin, who are the communists, they took a truckload of garbage, rubbish, and dumped it on the Berlin side. The people of West Berlin saw what they did, and this was what they did. 
They took a truckload of canned food, bread, milk, cabbage, and other provisions, and they neatly stacked them on the East Berlin side. On top of what they put there, they placed a sign. You know what was on the sign? Each gives what he has. Yes, each gives what he has. How very true. You can only give what you have. Can I repeat? You can only give what you have. If all you have is garbage, that's what you can give. But if what you have is cabbage, that's what you will give. Here is a question. And it's a question meant for you. And it's a question meant for me. What do you have inside of you? Do you have good character inside of you? Can we look up to you for moral excellence and firmness? Or is it garbage, garbage of anger that you have? Even though you are a prayer warrior, even though you are an elder in the church, and everybody knows you and say, ah, that's, that's Mr. So-and-so. That's Mrs. So-and-so. That's, that's his character. That's his way of life. And you are also saying, well, that's me. They know me now. They know me. Me, I can't see and not talk. Ah. You better go and work on your character. It's destroying you, but you don't realize it. What you have is what you give. Or is it the East Berlin garbage of pride? East Berlin garbage of jealousy? East Berlin garbage of stubbornness and rebellion, lost and all the works of the flesh that you have instead of good, solid character. Is it it you have instead of love? I say, what do you have inside of you today? Is it pride or is it humility? Is it prayerfulness with holiness or is it prayerlessness tarnished by lawlessness? Don't forget. Each gives what they have. You know, Paul tells us in Titus chapter 2 verse 11. I love this. He said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this world. Don't let anyone deceive you. Good character counts. Let me close by telling you something that happened to me when I was in primary school in Nigeria many, many years ago. All pupils in western Nigeria were encouraged to memorize and recite a certain poem about character. This poem was not written by a pastor. In fact, I know the old man that wrote this poem. And everybody in the western part of Nigeria was supposed to learn this. You say, you say, why not every part of Nigeria? Because it was written in the local language of those in the west. That was why. It was not written by a pastor, I repeat. But the words of the poem lined up perfectly with the scriptures. Yes, it did. Let me read it to you. And then we'll pray. It says, pay attention to character, my dear friend. Wealth can diminish from the house of a person. Beauty does fade off from the beautiful person. However, character follows you to the grave. It goes on and it says, character is like smoke. It will manifest eventually. Did you hear that? Character is like smoke. It will find its level and manifest. 
You may be a respected and honorable person in the eyes of those who are not close to you. But with closeness, we come to know a person's real character. Yeah. Have you ever seen people that you get close to and say, what? I didn't know Mr. So-and-so is like that. I didn't know Mrs. So-and-so is like that. They say in Africa that your clothing does not cover your character. Let me go on and read the poem. Character does not live where it is embodied. No. It is a child's character that gives the child name. That's why you call somebody an angry, an angry person. That's why you call somebody a jealous person. That your character gives you name. Even if the body looks beautiful, there is still a need for clothing. Even if the feet looks fine, there is still a need for shoes. If a person has beauty, but doesn't have good character, he or she is missing something very valuable. It goes on to say, good character is a person's jewel. It says patience is the progenitor of character. And character is the progenitor of blessings. Patiently work on your character. Ask the Lord to do it for you. And it will bring blessings to your life. And then it goes on and says you had better hurriedly walk on and improve your character, my friend. I love the way they ended that poem. It says you had better hurriedly walk on and improve your character, my friend. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for my friends all over the world that have listened to us today. I pray, God, that they will go home and walk on their characters so they will not end up like the men and women we've read of today. I pray that whatever needs to be shaken out of our lives, you will shake them out and make us the men and women that you want us to be so we can live godly, soberly, and righteously in this present world. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Until next time when I come again, may God bless you, may God keep you, may God's mercy be upon your life. Amen.